Hello, and welcome to another lecture. Uh, this week, we'll be doing two uh, assignments. Uh, it's going to be logo design for the first one, and then a Zentangle for the second one. Um, I mean, a lot of these concepts will actually blur together, which is perfect uh, accompaniment. So our assignment is going to be a logo. Now, this is, uh, I googled the best logos of all time. I don't know how uh, Google figures it out, but there they are. Um, this is not what we're going to be doing. Um, even though we're doing logos, these logos are way too simple. Um, <clears throat> and the reason that they're too simple is um, there's just like very simple elements here. Like, um, there you go, that's perfect. So like this one, there's like two things. There's a whale's tail, looks like, and then a W right there, uh, which is great, but you really can't, you know, if we wanted to animate these things, we couldn't do that, okay? This one too, uh, for warmer communication, it's a W, it looks great, but not a whole lot you can do with it. Um, probably one of the most famous logos is like the Apple logo. Again, it's a great logo for the time that they had, for what they were doing, but that's not where we're going with this assignment, okay? Uh, we want to be kind of weird about our logos and make them more of like a branding type thing. Um, so something like this, that, whatever, okay? So we're going to spend some time um, looking at different um tools, different, different ways to create some of these things that are kind of carried across um, a lot of these, especially like this one, uh, which is great because you'll see these banners are in a lot of these, okay? Not just these ones, but a lot of other ones too. Um, these little floral pieces here, those are in a lot of uh, pieces. Also, these stars, I don't know if you can see if they're stars. And you kind of see it better. Uh, those stars are in lots of different things too, or dots or lines or whatever. Uh, so there's a lot of elements that kind of carry across a lot of these um, logo things. So we want to see how we would create some of these types of things. Here's another one that's kind of neat. Oh, and Pinterest is great too. If you've never used Pinterest, uh, definitely get a Pinterest account because you can basically, if you find something cool that you like, you can save it and then re-get to it. All right, so here's another one that's kind of neat. This one's kind of neat too. Okay, lots of different things, lots of different ways to, to uh, work with these. Um, now, in our final iteration of this, we will be um, creating initially a, a black and white one. Um, once we have all the kind of the background stuff of how we're going to create a logo, we'll have a, a black and white one or a yeah black and white one. Uh, and then we'll create uh, five different color variations of this logo. OK, so you're actually um, your end thing will be your black and white one and then four different colors. All right. So. Um, I mean, this is only three of them right here, three different ones, and then the black and white one, okay? Uh, this is what I want to go over is just how do we create these different kinds of shapes um, inside here. Uh, so let's go to a new document. And like before, as always, you know, kind of uh, watch the video ahead of time, take some notes, see where I'm going with, thing, with things, uh, and then kind of come back to it. Uh, this will be a six by six. So if you have your preferences still, uh, you can use that as your uh, setting. Uh, or you can just type in six by six, CMYK is good, and create, create. All right, so um, so let's look at some of these um, basic things that we have here. Um, let me go click on that one. No, I just want to zoom in on it. There we go. Um, all right, so let's just look at the basic shape of these. Okay, so there's a lot of them that have, um, uh, like in this case, they have a circle that goes around it, but then there's this like uh, shape that kind of comes out, and then this one's kind of like intermixed with it. Uh, other ones like uh, this one here, there is no actual circle. The circle is kind of um, assumed or, or kind of like the shapes created, okay? Uh, but if you look at other ones of these, you'll see that there definitely is a, a definite circular shape or whatever, okay? So a lot of those, uh, I'm going to base the start of this off of basic shapes, all right? So I'm going to go with an ellipse, and this is just practice, okay? So I'm going to draw a circle, so I hold shift to make sure it goes, you know, straight. I'll zoom in so I can see it. All right, so there's my basic circle. Uh, now, a lot of this also depends on line weight uh, to make things kind of look better. So sometimes we'll have things like maybe like a, a four point stroke, and then I'm going to copy this and then control shift B or command shift B. 
and paste it, and that pastes it right on top of itself, and then I could hold down Alt and Shift and shrink it down. Okay, so that just gave me two copies. I could have also just gone into the layers here and then just drug this to the new layer button, and that gives me a copy, and then I could click on one of them uh, and then just Alt Shift to scale it down. Okay, uh, either way. All right, so now I can take this stroke and maybe put it at one. Okay, so here I've created just a very simple uh, but effective way to kind of show off um, the main border of it and then kind of the inner border. Yeah, put that down to three. Yeah, that was cool. All right, so I can take this and make other variations of this too. All right, so let's see what else we can do. Uh, I'm going to take these shapes here and I'm just going to copy it over. Okay, so I'm in the selection tool, I hold down Alt, drag it over. Uh, so I could take uh, this outer one, let's say, um, and I could make it, where's my strokes? Hide that for a second. There you go. Uh, I can take my strokes and I could make them dashed. Okay, so now I have these dashed lines going around. That's kind of cool. Well, here's how we adjust it. Here's how big the dash is, and then here's how big the gaps are between them. So if I take my dash and I make it, let's say, 10 points, you'll see that we get a lot more dashes in there. If I make it you know, four points, we'll get even a lot more in there, okay? Now, I could take this and you'll see, if I zoom in, oops. Uh, if I zoom in, they're square. Remember up here we have the caps? So we could round these off and round the corners. There we go. Uh, yeah, I don't know why that didn't work initially. Uh, so we can just round these caps and now we'll have uh, rounded pieces. And if we uh, fix this enough, let's say we do this to three or to two, um, you'll see that we start to bunch together, okay? And the real the re reason for this is that the line weight here and the point dash there are just kind of like, you know, it's not enough room for stuff. That's where we would use the gap. So we could then say maybe we want the gap to be five. There we go. Uh, then I could lower the line weight if I needed to, lower the dash if I needed to. And I can really start to play with the shape of this. Um, and that's what's really awesome about it is the ability to kind of customize what we want um, this whole thing to look like. Maybe I want this to be 10 uh, points between them. That gives me less dots, uh, but they're further uh, apart, right? Uh, say the dash is only one or the dash is only 0.5. Now we're getting into something that's a bit more rounded uh, than the previous one. Okay, so again, we can kind of play with the different ways that to create different shapes uh, inside here. And that's pretty awesome, all right? Now here's some other stuff that we can do too. <clears throat> Let's say for something like this, uh, we like the two line pattern, all right? So this is a new technique. So I'm gonna go to my line tool and I'm just gonna draw a line like that. I'm gonna go to my selection tool and just copy it and just drag it down. All right, so I'm gonna take this line and I'll make this two points. I'm going to take this line and make it, let's say, 0.5. Okay, I'm going to bring these closer together like that. Make sure they're lined up perfect. Oops, they're not. Line up right there. There we go. All right, so now these are lined up good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two, and under the, um, uh, sorry, here, uh, under this basic stroke area, I'm going to go to this, uh, context menu and say new brush okay and what this will allow me to do is make a new art brush so i'm just going to call this thick thin okay there we have a thick line and a thin line uh, i'm going to leave the settings as they are except for this colorization i'm going to put tints and shades and then just hit okie dokie all right so now what i can do zoom out a little bit now I can take this and copy it again, so we can see it. Click on this one path, go up here, and then there is that thick thin. So now when I click on it, you'll see that I have that exact path. As it's one path now, it's not two paths, which is pretty awesome, okay? And here's why. Let's just uh, leave that alone for a minute. I'm gonna go to uh, my rectangle tool. I'll just draw a rectangle. And I'm going to go to my circle tool. Not 
Now draw a little circle. There we go. Oops. All right, so that's up here. Let me make it a little bigger. And then duplicate it to the bottom. Okay. Don't be afraid to play with these things too, because it's not ever going to be um, perfect the first time. I'm just kind of resizing. You know, that's like basic stuff. We're just resizing it, moving stuff around. All right, that's good. All right, so I'm going to take all these shapes. And remember, we have the uh, Pathfinder. Okay, this is a, the shape mode thing. Uh, so we can go in here and combine all this into one shape. Okay, now here is where I could use that. Now watch how easy that is. Boom. And now I've created that shape. Okay, uh, now without doing that, it would be very difficult to set that up. Uh, you'll see that we do have a little issue right here. Oh, let's try playing with that. No. No. Uh, it's not going to matter too much because I'm going to round it anyway. Um, so it's no big deal. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my direct select. You'll see how we get these little circles. And I'm just going to round these off. And just by rounding it some, you'll see how now that took care of that issue. Okay. Now, if I don't like the shape of this, <clears throat> I can just marquee this. And just move, I just marquee the top half and just move this down. Okay, so I can very quickly kind of create shapes uh, using these kinds of methods and then modify those shapes as well um, to create different looks to things too. Okay, so uh, you want to be able to do this because this is going to be a huge lifesaver. If I tried to go into um, this shape and create that exactly, you know, the same way I did here, it'd be a very difficult thing to do. Um, just to show you, uh, very difficult. It would be, it would be tricky. Let's put it that way. Okay. So let's copy this. So copy it again, just so you can see how to do this uh, another way. Uh, so let's say I need this to be a thick one on the outside and a thin one on the inside. So I'll make this one thick. So three is what we had before. And if I were to duplicate it like we did before, I'll go and find that one. There's the eyeball. There it is. Copy it. Um, I grab one of these. I go to scale it. Now watch what happens as I scale this. Come on. Look at how it's not lined up correctly. Okay. Uh, as you scale these shapes that are not uniform, like a perfect circle or perfect square, you get this funky stoof happening. Right. So there's other ways to do this too. So if I grab that original shape and I go to object and I go to path, there's one called offset path, okay? And what this will allow you to do is, usually I turn preview on unless you know exactly what you want to look like. Um, and then you can just type in numbers. So point, negative point 0.1, okay? Now we'll get something that looks kind of off there. So negative point zero five. Yep, that one looks pretty, pretty close. Um, we want that the uh, joins right here. Do you want those to be rounded? Do you want them mitered so they're sharp? Uh, do you want them to be beveled? You know, and then what is that limit of when it's going to do it? Okay. Um, so uh, this will get you a little bit closer, but you'll see it's still not an exact copy of that original one. Um, this one here is nice and rounded, and then this one here um, oh, that is a bit pointier. Why don't yeah, that one's pointier, but still it doesn't look as good, okay? And I can't go too far down with this either. Um, if I were to click on that, go back, path, offset, okay? So if I want this to be even further in, oops, the other way, point zero or point 0.1, there we go. Um, you'll see that we really start to deform the shape of this. Um, it's not looking like the original um, shape was in here, okay? Uh, so there is some limitations to using that offset stroke. Um, this one is nice because it just works. I'm still confused as to why that didn't. Oh, there were no squares there, circles there. That's weird. Uh, it might be because I have these extra points. Yeah, so when I created that originally, um, somehow those points didn't come off good. Not a huge deal because I can just go in with my tools I round this off. I duplicated it. I did. 
Come on. There we go. Good enough to load that on. Okay. Now, this does also have limitations to it because uh, if I start to increase this thickness, you'll see that it does this. Okay. So, it's thicker lines going this way, the thinner lines going that way. Um, so, it does have some limitations to this, um, but very easily I could just take these two shapes and just change their position, change their stroke weight, and basically recreate what this shape is supposed to look like. Um, and it'll make my job a lot easier doing that kind of thing. Okay, so that is creating this kind of thing. And uh, what's awesome about this is that it's not limited to just these straight lines. Um, you can basically create anything and make it that. So I could do a uh, an ellipse <clears throat> like so. And I'm going to switch these so that it's built this way. And just for fun, uh, let's go like that. All right, so I have this, okay? So I can take these and duplicate them, right? Uh, if I duplicate one, I can hit Control D, and it'll just redo that duplicate again, which is awesome. So I can take this, <clears throat> and then I could go to oops, here, there, new brush, new art brush. And now this will actually be my path. Now, just a couple options. Uh, let's just do teardrops. A couple options here is you can change um, the uh, width of your line, which is the thickness here, based on a fixed uh, measurement, which is what we currently have. Um, or if you have a stylus, you could actually use some of these extra properties. Okay. Um, you could also change how it scales. So you can scale proportionally, uh, stretch to fit the stroke length, or stretch between guides. You can change the direction of your stroke. So if you wanted to go this way versus that way, or that way versus this way, whatever. Um, changing the color mode is definitely helpful. If I don't do this, you'll see what happens. All right, so we have that. And we'll just create a circle. Mm -hmm. I'll flip the script and I will choose my teardrops. There we go. So now we have these like teardrops going that way, which is pretty awesome. Okay. Um, and then if I were to change the color of this, let's say I made this red, you'll see that this definitely does not turn red. And the reason it doesn't turn red is because I didn't specify that I'm, you're allowed to even change the color of that. I was clicking the wrong one. All right, so I'm gonna go back to this. You can just double click these two. You don't have to recreate them every time. Um, uh, and you want to be on tints, not tints and shades. That's why I was, because it was uh, adapting the shade from the black. Same thing with the hue shift. It was adapting the black from the hue shift. That's why I was doing that. Um, had I chosen white for that, then the other one would work finer. Um, so yes, do tints, um, and then you should be good. All right, so now let me go back to my teardrops. We'll click those. Tints, apply the stroke. There we go. Okay, so um, now you can see that we can change you know, that kind of thing really quickly. Right, so you wouldn't use these <laughs> these little guys here um, for anything really. Maybe you would. All right, so I'm just going to delete those. We don't need those guys. Now, another point of interest here: um, if you're on a lab computer, like at the college, um, these things would go away uh, every time you reboot. Okay, uh, I'm going to delete the ones I don't need. So this one here, I can drag to the trash. Drag that one to the trash. Drag this one to the trash. Uh, oops. Down the trash. Oh, I guess I'm using that other one still. All right, I'm using it. Okay. Um, so you want to go here and then you want to save your brush library. So after you make something, you want to save it and put it into your folder. So this would go into, um, I like to keep them with my Illustrator stuff. So summer of 2017, sorry. Um, and you can just make a folder inside here that's just, you know, um, presets. And it's good to have these kinds of things. So strokes, um, that's good. Call it 001 for now. All right, so now it'll back those up. And then when we need to, let's say our computer reboots, it's not there anymore. We can just go to open the brush library and then go and find those, okay? 
Now there are other ones here, but really avoid using um, these ones, especially um, at first. Um, you can definitely look at them and see. So if I went to Borders Novelty, come on, there we go. Um, you could definitely use this kind of thing. You'll see there's arrows, uh, whatever. Um, or at least maybe get ideas for things. Uh, but don't use these as your artwork because these are, um, people use these all over the place and you're never going to get a job just using the default stuff. I'm just going to delete those from my stuff. Let's remove the stroke from there. That should be good. Let's put that double line back on there and then make sure it's not too tense. There we go. All right. Okay. Um, Cool. And that'll go for a lot of things that we're going to be doing in this assignment is we want to um, use and save um, all of our things that we're doing. Okay, cool. Um, and that will be a, a turn in also. You'll be turning in your your stuff here. So obviously you don't delete it. Uh, if you make ones you don't need, just drag it to the trash or delete it. Um, that way it's nice and clean. You don't have a bunch of garbage in there. All right. So that's how we can make just some of these basic um, shapes here, just kind of like these outlines. Um, this little dotted line here too, same kind of thing. You could use that dashed line with the offset. So I can make that shape and then use the offset. Uh, let's go with some different shapes, okay? So um, on this circle here, I'm gonna drag a circle out. I have it red. I don't really need a fill on it at the moment. Okay, so let's say I wanted to create um, a different kind of shape. Um, using these points here, I can manipulate the shape to create obviously different kinds. But what if I wanted more points? Okay, instead of going here to the pen tool and clicking, which does add points, but they're not exact. Okay, and sometimes we want things to be exact, um, especially for let's say this kind of flowery design. If one of these flowers was a hair over this way or that way, uh, it may look pretty bad. Okay. So I'm gonna to go to object path and you'll see inside here too, there's an add anchor points, okay? And if I click on that <clears throat> and I go to my direct select, um, you'll see there's now an anchor point right at the center of each of these points. If I go back to uh, direct select, I go back to object, I go back to path and add anchor points again, you'll see again that now we've added another one in here. So this is what I will do sometimes is add anchor points that way um, to a basic shape. That way I'm basically creating a little grid pattern that I could then tweak, okay? So what I've done here is, um, maybe I did grab every other one. There we go. And then I've scaled every other one in. So I went to, I hit E to get to the transform tool, free transform tool. I held down Alt and then I drug it in. Okay, and that creates that very similar shape to what you just saw. Okay, now another way we could do that, let's just set that aside. Uh, we could also go to our star tool, right? Because there's something that looks like a star. Uh, I could just click. It'll tell me how many points I want. So if I look at, you know, I'm recreating this shape. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Classic eight-sided star. Don't matter about the radiuses too much, except I want them to be the same. So 0.5 and 0.5. There we go. And you'll see that this one um, did do the exact same thing where it creates uh, that shape for us. Now, again, going through and grabbing every other one of these points. Oh, you know what I did? Oops, that was me. hold on. Sometimes the light's on, but nobody's home. Uh, these are two radiuses. Uh, I'm thinking of something different. Uh, radius one is the inside. There we go. 0.25 here and then 0.5 out there. Perfect. Um, there we go. So now we don't have to scale this in, which is what we initially, what I initially wanted. All right. So now I can go and hit A, grab the circle tool, and then just round this off. Maybe a bit more. That's good. Make it bigger. Okay. So now we've created this kind of shape. Um, not exactly that shape there, but definitely closer, okay? Um, so I'm gonna take this and make it black. Actually, click it first, come on, click, click, click. there we go. Make that black. Uh, I'm gonna go to my object, I'm gonna go to um, 
path. Where are you at? There you go. Offset path <clears throat> and preview. And I want this to be notched in just a little bit. Uh, and you can actually go outside too. Um, like if I set this to negative 0.1, you'll see we've lost some of the shape. So if I set it to 0.1, um, you'll see that it maintains the shape pretty good. Okay, so sometimes that's a good alternative is to go uh, with the inside one first and then go the opposite way to get the outside. There you go, 0.05 is good. Okay, so now I have two shapes here. Uh, just so you can see the difference, I'll color that one blue. Okay, so I have these two shapes. Uh, I'm going to take this one and just give it a stroke like that. And I'm going to take the stroke and make it a dashed line. I'm going to take the dashes. Let's say five. Yeah, one looks good. Maybe two. Yeah, two is good. Um, yeah, that's cool. And then I'll make this white. And the reason I'm making it white is because um, this is gonna be black. And it's always best to look at your stuff in black and white first because if it comes off good in black and white, then it'll come off good. Um, could come off good in color. Okay, so now we've created uh, not exactly that shape, but pretty close to that shape. Okay, all right. And the purpose of the initial part of this is just to see how to create some of these basic shapes. Okay, that's what the initial part just kind of like uh, people will get into something like this, and I just how do I create that? Okay, so you want uh, something too far. Uh, so you want to be able to see that kind of thing. All right. Um, what else? So this shape here, you see this little jaggedy thing? That's just a star, and then they have these lines coming out, um, and then they can use the um, joining feature of the pathfinder on that. Um, some of these paths are gonna be drawn, so something like this probably would be drawn. Uh, something like these circles here, that is basically what we just did there, just with more points, okay? Uh, let's do a banner. Do a banner. All right, so here's a banner that we can create. And you can, again, do these a million different ways, uh, or two million different ways. I'm gonna go to my rectangle tool. And I'm going up here so you can see which tool I'm going to. If I jump to the menus too many times, then you know people usually get lost. All right, so I'm gonna just draw a banner like this. Okay, uh, I'll switch the colors here. Okay, now again, I could hit, um, uh, shift X and that will swap the colors for me. Um, but I'm just going to hit the arrow there. So you can see it. Um, and then what I want to do is add divisions. So I'm going to go to object path, add divisions, or add anchor points. All right. So I get these anchor points right in the middle and then I can pull those up. Okay. And that was the purpose of that. And then if I take this and pull those down, you'll see how now we're getting this kind of banding happening right there, all right? Um, the other thing we could do too, instead of doing that, pull these up, go with my pen tool. If I hold down uh, Alt or Option and I drag this over, that usually creates kind of uh, a little bit better surface, okay? Uh, and the reason for that is because we don't have extra divisions. Anytime I'm using this anchor point tool or the um, curving tool here, this rounding, it's creating a bunch of anchor points right inside here, and it can be messy if you try to tweak things later, okay? So it's usually best to keep, just like our first assignment, the, the uh, pathing, to keep things kind of low. So here, we've created a nice little banner that goes whoop, like that, okay? Um, just by adding those points. Now, I would also go through and just delete these extra points on the end, just to keep it nice and clean. So that looks pretty good. Now, another thing we could do, let's just say I deleted that stuff, okay? I could focus on just one line, okay? Sometimes people get overwhelmed. Uh, let's go to path, add anchor points, okay? I could use a pen tool also, just another way to do it. Um, do this to that, okay? And create the shape that I want, okay? So right there, nice, nice shape. I'm gonna hold Alt uh, and drag it down. Okay, now I'm creating the thickness that I want. Then I can use the pen tool and click on one anchor point at the end, click on the other. 
click on this one, click on that one. And what that does is it creates two paths that are exactly aligned. The way I did it before is good, but it's not the best because uh, what it does is it uh, I have to manually adjust each one of these. Uh, sometimes that can be off, right? So if I grabbed this one here, maybe I pulled it not as far, okay? I keep hitting Alt. There we go. Oops, that's really off. There we go. So like this. So it may be hard to see, but it's definitely there. This comes up and then it angles down. Okay. So you want to be uh, as exact as possible with this kind of stuff. Okay. So here is our banner part. Uh, now for something like this, where it says product on the uh, label there, um, I'm going to switch the colors. There we go. So. Um, So there's a white outline and a black fill. And then what I'm gonna do is just go with my uh, pen tool and I'm just going to draw a shape. Now, as I draw here, if I were to click right there, it would actually start to uh, eliminate points, which is no good. So if I click off and then start drawing, I should be good, okay? So I'm basically just gonna draw what that back side would look like. There we go, okay? So now we have what the back part of this would look like. Um, this would probably come up a little bit, so let's just adjust that. Try to maintain a steady thickness, so that makes more sense. And then this should be behind it. So I'm going to use my hotkey, control, shift, left bracket, and just scoot that behind it. All right, so now it looks like this banner comes over and then goes back. And then I'm going to go with my pen tool again. Click here. Go straight across. Little angle there. Not right there. And just like before, control shift, left bracket, push that behind it. Okay. So now that I have this shape, then I can start to analyze, you know, what I want this to look like. Maybe I don't want this up here. Maybe I want this down there. So I can hit A, grab the uh, path here and scoot it down. Grab this and scoot that down. And now it's going to go upwards and then the path, the stroke will be behind it. That's kind of a neat thing we can do. We can also grab this path and scoot it in. We want that to be shorter. And then grab this. Oops, I didn't close that. There we go. Uh, click this path and do the same thing. Just scoot that in so it meets right there. Maybe I want these to be down so I can grab those and scoot them down some. Okay. So you're really kind of going through and just getting the shapes of these, making sure everything looks uh, right on one side. Um, so that looks cool. All right. So then once you have that, then we can just copy this. Uh, we can use our transform tool. You can use this transform our scale and preview it. You can say non-uniform, negative 100, and it'll flip it over to the other side. And then you can just hit copy and then just scoot it over. Okay, and it's just a matter of using your arrow keys to line that up. All right, so there we have a banner, okay? Um, now I can take this, uh, let's group it, control G to group it, and just, just see what it looks like, right? So put it in front of here, like, uh, that kind of works, right? Kind of. Uh, it works better probably on something that's a little bit lighter. Scale it down. Line that up. Try to make it even on both sides. Maybe the strokes of this should come down some. Yep, so we scaled it down. Yeah, that works. Okay. Uh, we could also start ungrouping stuff. You know, once we get in position, and then really start to play with where things are at. Okay. So maybe if uh, let me go back a second. Uh, there we go. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. Let's just say like that, okay? So I made this a bit bigger, uh, and then I'm gonna ungroup it. Control Shift G, or Object Ungroup. And I can take the circle, and I can move the circle forward. Control Right Bracket. Oops, too far. Control Left Bracket to push back. So what's happening now is it's actually above this one, or sorry, uh, 
the circle is below this one, but it's above that one. So it looks like it's kind of like tucked in here. And then just so you can kind of see that a little bit better, let me just give this a color. So you can see how it's kind of tucked. So it looks like it's kind of like wrapped behind it. Okay. Cool. All right. So that banner works pretty good. Uh, let's see what else kind of shapes we have here that we can create. Um, you'll see that these similar things, like here is, or how I got to some Spanish paper. I'm searching Italian apparently, google.it. Um, this one has the thin stroke, it has a white fill right there, and then this dark shape with the dotted line. And here's some more little banner strokes going along here, a white circle right there. Okay, uh, very neat stuff. Uh, these little dash lines here, let's go into how we can do those dash lines. Okay, so um, the stroke itself doesn't have any options for tilting it, which would be great. Um, so the lines and scale, um, there's some profile stuff here, but not really anything for rotating. That'd be a nice little option, Adobe. We can get to that. Uh, what we can do is just make a shape, right? So we just go like this. And let me give it a color so you can see it. I don't know why they didn't take. Let's just go there. All right. Uh, oh, I have a dash line. There we go. Okay. So there's my little stroke. Uh, maybe make this rounded. Cool. And then Alt, drag one. Come on. And then Control D a bunch of times. Okay. Now, if you don't like Control D, because that's kind of like too many clicks, um, you can go to not there. You can go to Effect. Distort and transform, transform, preview. How many copies do you want? I just use the scroll wheel and then just moving it uh, this way. Oops, that wasn't enough. Let's go back. That should be good. Okay. And then if you change one, it changes all of them. And that's what's awesome about that. You can just very quickly adjust your stew. All right. Um, so now I can take this and then go to my stroke, the brush, art brush, slashes, tint. Now, if we went to a circle here, just copy that one and change this to slashes, you'll see that we get that. And the reason for this, <clears throat> the reason that this is uh, doing this is because basically it's drawing a box around this whole thing here. And so if I were just to draw a quick box around this, uh, you'll see how the start, okay, how the start has this big gap there and the end has a gap there. So um, later on, we'll, we'll see better ways to do this or another way to do this. Um, but sometimes we have to go kind of like a different method to do that maybe a little bit quicker, okay? <clears throat> so let's go to, um, I'm just gonna create a circle or use one of these circles here. There we go. And I'm just gonna draw one of those dashes and I'm gonna draw it like up here, okay? So that's what I want that dash to look like. I'll round it off, there you go, good. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we need to um, rotate it around. Now, if we've tried the transform here, uh, you're gonna see that the copies of this, let's make them up, uh, settings and rotates, it basically rotates it here. And the reason it does that is because the pivot of where it's rotating around is right at the center. So there's this tool which you can change where that is, but obviously that doesn't help us out any, um, just because of how this is set up. Um, doesn't really work very good, uh, so we'll hit cancel. So what we have to do is use a different tool, which is the rotate tool. We go over here to rotate tool, and if I click here, it puts this object's pivot right there at the center. This is should be the center of this circle, okay? 
Now, if you're not sure, you can hit Control R, you can pull out some guides. See, it's like clicking between them. Let me make sure my snap to grids, snap to pixels off. There we go. All right, I'm going to move it away. Sometimes these are move it away and then bring it back. And center there. Grab that circle and then move it. Okay, so that's the center. So now I can click on this. Uh, I go back to the rotate tool, which is R, and then I click right where that intersection is, okay? Now, if I click and drag, you'll see that it rotates all the way around that object, which is exactly what we want to do, but we just want to duplicate it. So I'm gonna hold down Alt now, and then click in the center with the rotate tool on. And what that does, it brings up the rotate box, okay? So now I can say, all right, if I want uh, where's our example go? Right here. Uh, if I want, let's say, 36 of these, so about 36 there, um, I take 360, which is all the way around, and I divide that by 36, and I get 10. So basically 10 degrees between each one. Now you have to do a little bit of math on that just so that it ends up even. If I did 7, 7 doesn't go into 36 evenly, so there's no way that we would get an even amount. It would look weird. So I'm going to do 10, and then I say copy. Okay. Now I can hit Control D or Command D if you're on a Mac and just keep hitting it until I get all the way around. Okay, now if I screwed up on the shape, not too big of a deal, I can always grab the shape again uh, or undo or whatever and tweak it, modify it, whatever. Uh, but that's a pretty neat way to do it. Uh, unfortunately, there's not like a more simple way to do it or a quicker way to do it. Um, there are other ways to do that, but that's kind of like the easiest way to get something like that to happen. Okay, uh, so let's see what else we have. Um, some of these things will have some floral designs like this. Um, stuff like this. This is all done with the pen tool. Okay, so we'll get more into the pen tool as we play around with some of that. So don't worry about that too much now. Um, these little leaf things are pretty neat. Build one of those. And we're going to go with a circle, an ellipse. Hit A to get to our pivot. Give us some color so we can see it. And you could easily draw this with the pen tool also. This is kind of like an organic uh, shape. We're not really uh, tracing anything. Squeeze these handlebars in. And remember, I can hit um, the pen tool and then break these handlebars too, just to give myself a little bit more angle on these. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna swap these colors here, remove the fill or the stroke. All right, so I'm gonna draw a little line going down the center. And I hold shift to constrain it. Uh, I'll fill this with black. Why did that work? Oh, I don't have a size on here, there it goes. Oh, I didn't work last time. Um, and then I'm also going to adjust the um, size of this. So I basically want this to be thick here and then thin there. So if I go up to my strokes here and I do that, that will give me that. So it's going to be thicker and then thinner. So I'm going to make this maybe a little bigger. That's good. And take this. And looking at the size of this is what we're kind of looking at. Um, so if this is... Need to come down a little more. Let's 
Maybe it goes over. There we go. Better. All right. Uh, looking at the proportions of this, if this one is this big, you know, how big is the smallest one going to be? And if you look at them, they do have like some size variation. These ones are a little bit thicker than those ones. So um, I do want to have maybe this be a little bit tinier. Again, we can come back and adjust it. The process for this doesn't take terribly too long. Uh, I'm going to duplicate it and flip it over. Now, before I do any of that, we need to create the rest of these. So why not duplicate all these so I have, you know, copy them all at the same time. Um, so let's go to Effect, Distort, Transform, Preview, pull the copies up. Uh, I'm going to do a little moving horizontally. So there's my other leaves. Okay, the more work you can have Illustrator do for you, the better. And then I'm also going to scale. So let's scale these uh, 90%. And what this does is scales 90% um, for the first one, the 90% of that, the 90% of that, the 90% of that. So it'll get gradually smaller. You'll see they're lifting off the ground too, and this is because of that pivot that we had the issue with before. Now here, all I have to do is click the bottom one, and it'll put it closer to it. It's a little bit off still. Uh, I can adjust it. I could even go into the vertical and maybe make this, you know, 0 0.05 or something. Oops. Uh, I did negative 0 0.05. That was way too much. Positive 0 0.00. Five might be good. Okay, that's good. All right, maybe I'll add another one in here. Oops. And that should be good. And maybe I'll make this four. Okay, so now they all look like they're on the path, all sitting there, cool. Um, let's hit okay. All right, so now I want to go back to my transform again. Oops, not transform again. Uh, I'm going to copy this and see how it copied that whole thing. Uh, now I can go to reflect, which is over here under rotate, reflect, which is the O key, and then reflect that shape. Okay. Now it came in, you'll see that this is still doing the same offset. So if I go back to that transform and apply a new effect, the same settings are in here. So all I have to do is make that. Uh, vertical and negative. All right, so I need to edit that. <clears throat> so if I go back here to transform, um, notice how it says here, this will apply another instance of the effect. To edit it, double click the name of the effect in the appearance panel. So window appearance panel. And here's that transform. So here's something you could turn off and on if you need to, um, or you can just click on it and then edit it. So I just make that a negative. Uh, maybe make it a little bit less or more. Nope, uh, we're on the bottom too, so we have to make sure that's the top. There we go. And hit OK. Cool. So that works. Uh, we could have offset them too. We wanted you know, different shapes, whatever, but I think that's good. All right, so I'm going to grab all this stuff. I'm going to go up here and make a new brush. Um, art brush. I'll call this stroke. Uh, again, we can play with those after. Give that a tints. Cool. All right, so let's draw it on the circle. Switch the colors. Put that on. Okay. Now, it looks incredibly weird how this is set up. Um, if you look at these patterns that people have, uh, it's only half of that thing that's showing, okay? Um, and the fact that they're crossing here, this is actually like half of the circle that's then duplicated and flipped over. So we don't need a whole circle for this. So if I use the pen tool or the um, direct select, I just start deleting points, just that top point, you'll see that now we get um, this, on here. Now it looks odd. We can take that stroke down. And now that's kind of working. Uh, let's go back to this. Cancel that. I do that like 90% of the time. There we go. Now we can see it. So again, we can scale proportionately. We can stretch between the guides, uh, see which one's going to work the best. 
Uh, we can also change the scale of this manually if we're not liking the way that it's looking. Okay, so don't be afraid to go in there and play it uh, or play with it after you're done. Even the direction of this is not a perfect circle. Um, so if I rotate it up like this, maybe just adjust some of these points. There we go. Now, I don't have as many leaves, but again, it's not a huge deal because of how we have this set up. We can just go to the Transform Appearance palette, uh, add more copies, take the horizontal or the um, horizontal movement down, so maybe point, uh, 0.175. Make sure preview's on so we can see it. So, uh, maybe point 0.2. Uh, maybe 95%. Good. Raise up a little bit, and you'll have to tweak stuff. That's not that's pretty much a given, All right? Uh, and then I can just delete this one. Just delete that one. And then if I go here, let's try this. Let's try a transform on here because it's going to apply a new effect. And let's just say reflect in the y direction. Okay, so that reflected it. And we hit OK, and you'll see that it does reflect um, in that area, but it didn't really give us something extra, right? Um, no big deal. Let's uh, copy this, drag it down. And now let's try to do that same transform, apply a new effect, uh, trans reflect in the Y direction. Yep, there we go. Um, I probably could then reflect also. That would have probably worked. Or copies. All right. So that's for fun. Let's try that. Just side. Click that. New transform. Apply a new effect. Uh, one copy. And then offset. Or change that. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. All right. So we just changed. Make sure I click on it. Uh, we told it to reflect in the Y, we set the copies to one, and then we put the pivot on the bottom, and so it reflected it downward. Pretty awesome. All right, so now we can take that again. Make a new brush, hard brush, leafy, got that tint. Then we can come over here and pick AP2. There we go. Okay. And then the cool thing about this too is like that process isn't terribly long. My leaf doesn't look exactly like uh, their leaf here. So I definitely want to come back and tweak the shape of that leaf. If I wanted this end leaf also that they have, <clears throat> all I have to do is whatever leaf I end up using. Uh, Zoom in. I'm just going to go with the pen tool and just uh, alt click these points here. And that makes them pointy. And you'll see that there's updating on each part. So we have to do anything else. Uh, there we go. So once I'm happy with this here, and I say, OK, well, now I want to leap at the other side of it. Then I can just duplicate this, scoot it down. It'll have these other pieces, but then I can just turn them off. So I could go here, delete. Now they're gone. Then I can rotate, put it at the end of this, scale that down. Now I have a little, little leap at the end. Uh, also, I can pull this back and give myself just a little bit more room here. There we go. So again, we can grab all that stuff. Make a new brush, art, yes. And make sure you go through and delete all your stuff that you don't need. Oops, tint, yes. Make sure you click your stuff too when you're testing it out. 
Otherwise, it'll do what it just did. There we go. Okay. And then again, I can rotate these forward. Uh, that'll change the shape of that. Whatever. All right. So here's what they have on theirs is they have it like this. They have it reflected over that side. And because these are just paths, uh, we can add more points if we need to, to really tweak the shape of them. Uh, I could even do on this uh, specific path, I could do a transform and do that same reflect. Try to do a copy of it and then make sure I, oops, not that, scoot that over. There we go. And so that way, when I adjust one, it'll adjust the other one, which is a pretty nice way to work, um, especially if you have a um, uh, an art director, uh, boss, whoever, uh, that tells you, you know, make this bigger, make that smaller, make this here, make that there. Which you're sure to get. There we go. Okay. And then you can come back and tweak, tweak, tweak. Like that one, I just want a little bit more uh, wave on that one so I can just adjust it. Okay. Right, let's see what else we got in our little sample here. Right. Now we've got the banner. These little lines here are the same exact things as the dashed ones. Um, these little dots are the same way as the other one that I showed. Uh, let's see how we can cut a shape out of another shape. Okay. So, like this line right here, that's exactly where I want that to be. And if I take the color of this background and I change it to, let's say, pink for some reason, you'll see how it stands out. Okay, so that's like an important thing because you may want that to happen at some point. Um, and that kind of fits in with this too, of how I was able to get these things to line up pretty nicely. All right, and let's do that first. All right, so let's do the mountain because the mountain is kind of like really start of that. So I'm just clicking some points. You know, what does the mountain look like? There we go. Perfect. Okay. So those have to be perfect for, you know, playing around. Don't think you're playing around. So it has to be perfect. You just want to make sure that you're understanding the concepts in the playing around so that you can apply it to an actual um, assignment. All right. So this part here, let's make that black. And I'm going to use a, um, Tool called the blob brush. So it's under the paintbrush. It's shift B. I'm going to pick a color. Doesn't matter what for now. And I'm just going to go bloop. Okay. If I want the brush smaller, I use the left bracket. Right and bigger, the right bracket. Okay, more brushes. Now the cool thing about the blob brush is that it's actually blending anything that I overlap here, okay? If I, just to show you, if I click on this with the selection tool, you'll see this is one shape. If I went with my paintbrush tool, and I did that, it's drawing paths, and you're gonna get some funky stuff that happens. Even if I switch this from stroke to uh, fill, you'll get you know some weird stuff. The blob brush figures out what you just drew with that shape and keeps it like that. Pretty awesome. All right. So you've kind of seen this before. So with this Pathfinder, um, we can do these Unites, which bring everything together so they're locked together. Um, you can do these Divides, so it'll actually like separate oops, the pieces. Okay. So I can delete that stuff off, and now they're like lined up perfectly, which is um, pretty neat how that works. Okay. Uh, I like to do this other tool, though, which um, I think is really helpful. So I grab all the stuff, and it's right here. It's called the Shape Builder tool, and this is kind of a newer thing to uh, the later programs. And all you do is you click on the stuff that you want to be new shapes. So here's a new shape. Here's a new shape. These are all new shapes. Ignore the fact that they're going um, white right now. They're still there. It's just I don't have anything here, so it's hiding it. So just ignore that. 
Now I'm going to go back to my selection tools and just delete out all these extra pieces. Okay, so now I have shapes here. So I just marquee them. Um, just for fun, I'll just fill it with whatever color. Okay, so that's pretty neat how that works. Now, the other thing that we may want to come into, let's say we grabbed all this stuff and said we want a stroke on this. Let me go to black for the stroke. Let me go up here, stroke, there we go. Now the stroke that's on here, it's actually gonna outline the entire thing. We may not want that. We may not want a stroke on this piece and that piece there, okay? We may want just one stroke on this whole thing and no stroke kind of like in between them. Uh, so I'm going to undo that again. All right, so we should be back to here. All right, so I'm going to take this piece, and I'm just going to duplicate it. So I'm just going to um, Alt, drag it over. Okay, I'll put it back exactly where it was before. Then I'm going to grab this, go to my Shape Builder, um, and I can really just kind of click on these, okay? By clicking on these, it will automatically separate them from the other pieces. Come on, there we go. Okay. Uh, delete that. Okay, so either way it works. And I'm going to go here, give this a little filly. All right, now um, notice here too, this is an extra thing to kind of point out. Um, when I did that before, it separated this piece from that piece. So it actually broke these into two pieces. Um, this was already a separate piece because it was a uh, different shape. So now this actually has a full shape before it automatically cut it. So what that means is now I could go in here and make that black. There you go. Uh, make that black. Uh, but you'll see the issue that we're going to have here is that the stroke is kind of cutting through there, okay? And we could go into the alignment here and change where the stroke is happening. So now it's on the outside of it. Uh, but that may not be an option we want, okay? So I'm just going to turn that off. That's why we have this guy. So I'm going to bring this guy back into the scene. Line them back up exact. I'm going to switch his colors. Give him the stroke. So now we have pretty much the same uh, setup we had a minute ago. The only difference I'm going to do here, though, is I'm going to bring the stroke to the front. Okay. So remember our arranging that control shift bracket. So I'm going to do control shift right bracket. Now it's on top. Okay. Too big of a stroke, so I wouldn't use that. There we go. Okay. So that's a good way to be able to keep an outline by doing it as a separate shape. And then we have our basic shape, and then we have these other filling pieces in there. Okay, so again, a good way to be able to do that. Now let's go into gotta find a spot. Just go over. Okay. Um, let's go into here. Let's draw a circle. Put a rectangle in here. Let's say I want my name to be, you know, cut out of that rectangle. I'm just going to Give these some different colors so that we can see them, that's all. Okay, so we know the Shape Builder tool. This thing can get confusing. People get like really confused with how this thing is set up, um, especially if you haven't used it before and how it changes colors. Um, it can be, you know, a pain to work with. Uh, that's why I really like the Shape Builder. So all I have to do is say this, this, and then I can delete those pieces. And now that circle on the middle lines up perfectly with the other circle. And then I can go with my text tool. So I hit T, I click, make sure my name is visible. Make a bigger screen. Uh, let's make our font bigger. All right, because this is kind of like a artsy kind of thing. Let's go folder. I just want this to kind of cut through uh, that circle. Okay. 
So now I'm going to take these two pieces, uh, and I can do the same thing, go to the Shape Builder um, piece. I can also do the minus, so it'll subtract the front. Uh, but because this is text, it's actually not going to do anything. You see, it just doesn't do a single thing. So that's what's nice about the Shape Builder is that um, oops, I lied. Um, nope, the Shape Builder doesn't want to play nice either. Um, but because it's text, it's no big deal. So what we have to do is we have to take the text and we have to convert it into an actual shape. So let's go to object, I'm sorry, type, and create outlines. All right, so what this does is it creates um, shapes based on your text. So now if I needed to, I could round these off. Um, I could grab points and move them. Oops. Okay, uh, so now I can grab my type, grab this. I could do the minus front, and that will cut it off, okay? So the minus front and these Pathfinder ones are good for doing bigger, more complex shapes where it's like all in one. The shape builder is more of like your specific thing, like I want to grab this and subtract that and do whatever. Um, so you'll see we get the same shape there, but now that's basically cut out. Now this you know, may not seem like a huge deal, but you can actually use this for a lot of different things. Um, you can actually take your illustrator paths and you can bring them to other programs and you can actually use them to create uh, cutout shapes. So if I had like one of our students uh, wanted to have her name etched in wood and we have a laser that will actually burn or well, it, it lasers uh, wood and it can go all the way through or it can go just like the surface. So what you have to do is write out exactly what you want it to be in illustrator paths. So that's what she was able to do by cutting it out like that, okay? So that's how you can cut it out. So you can use Pathfinder, which is awesome, and then you can use Shape Builder 2, which is another great way to do stuff. Um, this guy here, oops. so that's just a white circle. We could cut them out too. So if we wanted to cut this out, we could use Shape Builder to actually cut it out. So now this is a hole. This is not just a circle, okay? Before, if I were to grab this and move it, oops, You'll see that the white is permanently there using the shape builder or using the pathfinder. Um, I can make it transparent. Okay. Um, all of these little things that you're seeing out here is pretty much the same way that I did uh, this one. I just had more points. Okay. So nothing too crazy there. Uh, what else? Oh, these lines. Okay. So sometimes you're going to want to have lines inside your stuff. Now, this one was done. Um, wasn't done initially as one line. Like you'll see here, I'm clicking on individual lines and can move it. It was done a little bit differently. So let's go to a line here. Let's go to this. Let's go to new brush. Now I'm gonna make a pattern brush. And oops, I don't want a pattern brush. What am I doing? I'm going to object pattern make. Okay, not pattern brush. This is a different thing. I go to object pattern make. Okay, now what this does is it takes me into this brand new mode. Okay, you see that this menu came up here. It's kind of dim and gray. And what it's going to do is here's my original pattern and here's the rest of it. It also brings up my pattern options. Oh, I don't want you to merge. There we go. Uh, my pattern options. And in here, I can specify different things. I could say how many copies I want. Um, three by or nine by nine, whatever. I can specify the width. So if I want these to be tighter, I could do that. So I had something, you know, similar to this. Uh, I'm gonna say size tile to art. All right, we could also change things like horizontal spacing and vertical spacing. We still want to kind of tweak uh, the look of that, okay? Back to zero, okay. So let's just see what this is going to look like. So I'm going to say done, and it makes a new pattern. All right, so let's go to um, a circle. And we're going to fill it with that. Now, we're not going to find it under here. This is where strokes are. We're going to find it under here, under the color for stuff. And if we look here, there's our new pattern. And if I click on it, there it is. There's my new pattern. Now, you don't see a whole lot of stuff happening in here because um, it's just kind of small. 
as I make this bigger, you'll see more of these coming in. Okay. So let's go back to our pattern here. Go back to this pattern by double clicking it. And let's play with some of these other ones. So you can do brick by row, brick by column, uh, hex. And some of these you'll, based on the shape, this is just a line. Based on the shape, you'll get some pretty neat stuff. Um, I'm going to take these, and I need to make this smaller, so I need to. Okay, so I can edit the shape of this. So I'm just going to shrink this down. And you'll see again, we're getting this kind of gap because of this spacing here. Okay, so I can open up my stroke. Um, I can try rounding off the corners a little bit. Um, and this is where that horizontal spacing comes in. So if we just play with this a little bit, like 0.05, negative 0.05, that's still too much, 0.01, there we go. And vertical spacing, negative 0.01, there we go. You'll see that that lines up pretty good. And we can probably take that back to square, just so we can line it up even better to get that perfect. So maybe 0.015, nope. There we go, 0 0.000115 seems like it's a good amount. Okay, so I'll say done. Um, there we go. Uh, and so now we have that shape right here with that pattern. Okay, so that's another way that we could do that. It looks like it's still kind of steppy. I may have to tweak it a bit further. Um, we could also just go in with pen tool. Just go. Like that. Go pick a pattern. Oh, uh, this has a pattern assigned to it, so I need to get rid of that. And there's a pattern tile tool also where you can kind of uh, interactively move this around. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Go back to a circle. Back to that. No. It looks a little choppy. I think it's just my preview here. It definitely wasn't in the other thing. Okay. Uh, but again, the other way we could do that too is by using some of those other methods. It's important to know enough uh, enough tools that you have an understanding of, of how to do things a different way because one way is not always going to work every single time. Okay, and you may want, you know, depending on what the job is, you may want different results, more editability, edit ability uh, or whatever. So let's say that. I'm also going to make these, you know, don't forget to play with the stroke weights because you really create some cool stuff with those. play with that. Okay, so you can do that too. Oops. Much too far. There we go. Should make sure they cover this entire thing. And 
I think I want to do, I'm just going to rotate this vertical. Let's reset this up. Sometimes it's just easier to reset it than trying to tweak what you already have. Oops. There we go. There we go. Now I know I can rotate that afterwards. Okay, so again, we can kind of play with some of these, um, you know, seeing what's going to give us what, what stuff. Um, there's Pathfinder, so maybe we divide this. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so that works. If we don't like the fact that this one ended here and there's a big gap there, we can hit undo. We can scoot. That over. All right, so now we can take this and rotate it and do that. Oh, it did look like we lost some of our stuff here. Yep, I lost my stroke. See, I had my stroke here, and now it's gone. Okay, so I'm going to hit Control Shift G because it groups everything whenever you do all the operations. All right. Now, see that um, that's kind of a weird thing that it does is it separates all these pieces. Uh, let me hit undo a couple more times. Okay, so. Just one more time. I'm going to take the shapes here and object path. I'm going to say outline stroke. Okay. So what this does is it actually creates um, the outline of that stroke. So now it's like locked in. So it's not just a stroke. Now it's a fill. Okay. So we can again try this uh, trimming. No. No. Merging. Okay. You'll see that these just uh, aren't giving us the exact results we want because they're just not doing um, the best thing. So this is where I would use something like Shape Builder, uh, where I could come in and just click on these pieces. Now, what's cool about this too is that oh, I don't want to stroke on this. There we go. Uh, it'll actually fill in these other areas here, these gaps. Reselect stuff. That should be black. Yes. And these ones should have a black fill. Yes. Okay. So many things. Uh, this one doesn't touch it. Let's get rid of that. This one doesn't touch it. Let's get rid of that. Cool. All right. Back to our shape builder. Now I'm just clicking on each one of these, and what that will do is it'll separate it, and then we can delete it. Okay, I'm not going to go through the whole process of this, but I just want you to see it. There we go, there we go. Okay, so now that'll be a nice little lineup, uh, very similar to how this one was done. You can see that there's weighting in here where there's a little bit thinner, uh, and then over there's a little bit thicker. All right, so now let's get to the actual assignment. All right, uh, so um, what we're going to do is take all this stuff and we're just going to shrink it down. Okay, this is our playing stuff over here. That's what that is. So um, none of this stuff we're actually going to use for our um, logo specifically. We're going to use that as things that we can use to create our logo. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to have a couple things. One is our uh, initial, and we want to have that. So you can copy my logo, or you can kind of play with a different um, kind of logo if you want. All right. So uh, I'm going to create uh, create my letter S. And if you look at the font that I had, it was, I believe, that one, uh, Niagara Engraved. OK. And I kind of tweaked the shape of that. Um, you can play with some of the stuff if there are options here. Or if you go to the character, there are usually some options there. So things like the width, you can take that up. There we go. 
Um, cool. I'll make this a bit bigger. Yeah. Sometimes it's easier to work bigger and then kind of shrink everything down. Uh, if you want to split your views, oops, I'm sorry, the window. Um, arrange, and let's say tile. There we go. All right. So this is just a quick way to be able to see, you know, what what I'm trying to copy here. All right. Uh, we have a circle around it. Okay, now our first logo will be in grayscale. So we want to make sure that it reads in grayscale. That's good. And we can also do this. Um, the Pathfinder is a cool tool, and usually it's paired with these align tools, and they're up here. So you can use these to horizontally align stuff and vertically align stuff. Okay, and then you can adjust it from there. So the S, I think, wants to actually be a little bit lower in the box. There we go. Cool. All right, so let's take this, and I'm just going to duplicate it. I'm going to scale it and put it up. Uh, this is actually a little bit thicker, so I'll take that a little thicker. Cool. This here is probably like uh, 1.5. And then I'm going to copy this, so I just control C it. I'm going to paste it in place, which is control shift V. Okay, that means it's right on top of it, and then just scale it down. All right, then I'm going to make this uh, stroke smaller. Okay, now I need to get that Sarcona banner across there. So I'm going to use the pen tool, click a point, click a point. Go to path, add anchor point. That way I have an anchor point in the middle. Pull it down, use my pen tool, convert this into a curve. There we go. Now, I have to make sure this is lined up straight. So as I move this left and right, you'll see that that um, alignment tool pops up. Um, again, if you're not sure, move it really far away and then move it back. And that way it'll line up with the center. Okay. Uh, I may want these to come up maybe a little bit higher, so let's just grab these and move these up. Or I can move the other one down, it doesn't matter which way. I'm going to go back to my pen tool. Um, when I move both handlebars like this, um, you'll see that only one goes in at a time. So uh, for something like this, I'm just going to Alt drag it out again. That way I get both handlebars coming out. And if you hold Shift, it'll make sure that it goes straight. Yep, that works. All right, so I'm going to pull it up a little bit more. That's good. I'm going to hold down Alt, drag it down. I'm going to hit my pen tool again and just close these off. There we go. All right. So now I need to uh, get these shapes um, to match. And I think I need this a little bit thicker too. So if I just grab these three points, pull that down some. Now, looking at the space here, the space there, and the space up here, this letter S just might be a little bit too big for our needs. So I'll make that a little bit smaller. Okay, now I can grab this. And kind of find a better uh, proportion. Okay, I'm making sure that I hold Alt every time I drag, so it pulls it from the center. All right, that looks better. All right, so now let's go to this. Let's go to this. Let's do our oops, uh, minus one intersect. Okay, so that's what I want is with intersect to get that. Um, 
So I could do a couple other things, but I'm just going to use this shape builder. And now, let's come on, do that to me. You're making me look like a fool illustrator. All right. Cool. So now we've deleted the that piece. Um, cool. So now we can take this, make this a white outline, filled with white. Yep. And we'll take a name Sarcona. All there. And then what I did was I tried to find a font that was similar to that, but not maybe exactly the same. Uh, you don't want to go too far off base, like having um, like a total scripty font and then something really different. There it is. So this is just Niagara Solid. All right. So now this is kind of on an arch here, a little bend. This is not. There's other tools we can do under type. Um, not under type, under object, um, envelope distort, we can say make uh, with warp. And what this will do is, um, you may have seen these in Photoshop before, I hit preview, and it's just going to warp that shape. And I can control the amount of bend on here um, using this. This is kind of like a quick way to do that. Um, it does distort the text um, some, so you obviously want to be careful, not going too crazy. And I also want to make sure this is kind of sized into the right position. So I hit E, getting it lined up here. Again, looking at our center. And zoom in. The C should be the center of this. No, it doesn't want to snap. So let's drag a guide to the center. All right, let's snap there, okay. All right, that's good. All right, just double checking. Okay, so now we have this. So now we can go here, object, uh, make with mesh warp, preview. All right, so a little bit of bend, pull it up there. I'll undo that again. It's too big, so I want to scale it down. So I want to do too many warps on this uh, because that would look odd. Now, another way we could do this too, okay? Let's say we didn't want to distort that. Um, we can take this shape here, and I'm just going to draw a little path. There we go. We don't need a fill, we just need that stroke. Uh, I'm going to take it and pull it to the bottom. And you'll see how it matches basically the um, direction that I need that to go. Maybe this could come a little bit further down. Maybe these could come just a little bit further up. There we go, that's happy. All right, so what I can do is take this text and just cut it, control X. And if I click on that path and then click on the path with the text tool, it'll actually type on there. So this is actually a little bit easier to do um, as far as getting it locked in. Okay, so now that that's cool, I just pasted it right on there. Um, I could click on this. Let me take that off. Hotkeys don't work too good when you're in the type tool. Uh, there we go. If I go to my direct select tool and I click on my type, uh, there are some options here, these little bars, so I can move this along or move this back here. So in this case, it's not really going to do anything because my type is already like exactly where it needs to be, ish. Maybe this this coming up. There we go. Um, and then also what's cool about this is I can still take my text and change the font size. And I can maybe keep it centered. And I could still go to my characters. And maybe give them a little bit more uh, kerning here. There 
There we go. So I'm just going to pull that back just so that it does stay centered. Uh, same thing here, you'll see the little line for the arrow. Uh, that's the end of the text. So you want to pull that to the end. This is the start of the text, pull that to the start. All right, and then you can nudge it around if you need to. Okay, so there's uh, most of that. Now let's get some of these little dashy lines here. And with this, I'm actually going to create a um, brush. A text box hiding out here. I'm going to create a brush, a pattern brush. So I'm going to take that, give this black. There we go. Okay, so there's my brush uh, or my stroke. I'm going to go to new brush. This will be a yeah, pattern brush. That's right. Yeah, just to kind of see what you know these different things do. It's kind of neat. Um, let's do auto centered. That should be fine. Okay, everything else should be good. Uh, this will be just be vertical dashes. All right. So I'm going to copy this uh, circle. I'm going to control shift V it, and then I'm going to scale it upwards. Okay. Now, if I go to my pattern brush, there it is. Okay, now it's super thick uh, because it's repeating so much. So I can just go into that and add some spacing. Let's say 500. <laughs> let's say a thousand. There we go. That's better. Uh, let's say fifteen hundred. Cool. All right. Uh, so we hit OK. Apply the strokes. Uh, and then on here, you'll see how this is kind of like thinner up here. It's kind of disappeared, and up there it's thicker. Um, on this, I can make this thicker too. So if I made this two uh, or three or whatever, it's gonna make that thicker. But it's actually good. About 0.75. If I want it to be thicker, like a lot thicker, um, I go to this, make that thicker, and then just remake that brush. Vertical dashes, I was at 1500. Oops, name already exists. Trash that one. Move the strokes. Click on this. There's my new one. Uh, set that down to. Right. Yep, that works. Okay. Uh, so now to get this to be a little bit thinner up here, um, I went to my width tool. Okay. So you can do this up here, which works. Just click on that. Um, or you can go to the width tool and manually set it up, which is really nice. So let's set that back to uniform. Let's go to the width tool. And the width tool allows us to click and drag on one of these uh, points here and change the width of a stroke. So up here, I can make it really thick. And then down here, I can make it really thin. And that gives us that kind of look. Okay. Um, but again, you could use these two and then just rotate. So it's like that. All right. Uh, let me go back to this. I think I need to change this uh, spacing a little bit more. I want a little bit more of these. Like 1200. Apply the strokes. Reset this to that. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. And then I need those lines in the background. So um, let's go here. Uh, maybe 1.5. Okay. Now for ease, I'm going to uh, group these together. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before. So I'm going to say object. Uh, 
path outline stroke. There we go. And then I'm going to click on shift click on this inner circle. And then we will do There we go. If I alt click on that one, that's when it does it. Uh, it will cut it for me. Okay. Now it does get rid of that, so I think I'm just going to use the shape builder. You know, sometimes you just kind of play with it, like, well, let's try this and try this and try this. Um, you're trying to find the best way to do it, and that's very good as you begin working on stuff because it really help you develop your skill and develop your style uh, and your um, abilities, obviously, because the more tools you have under your belt, the better off you're going to be. Obviously, make sure this is good before you start doing this stuff. Okay. So I have it all selected or um, cut off. I'm going to switch to my direct select, click on that, delete, delete. Okay, now that we have to delete twice because of how it sets it up. So I click here. Oops, that one didn't cut. Fix that. And that one didn't cut either. So it deletes the point, and then it deletes the rest of the path. Now obviously, make sure you're paying attention, because if you're not, you could accidentally delete something that you actually needed. Yep, see these two, for whatever reason, didn't uh, play nice, so they're have to be done again. Click, click. Right. Yeah. Back to the shape builder. Oops, shape builder. Okay, so they're accepting it now. Okay, so again, click, delete, delete, go down to the bottom. All right, everything looks good now. Okay, so I'm going to take this shape and I'm going to make sure it's moved to the very back. So I'm Control Shift Left Bracketing, it's all the way in the back. Um, the reason it doesn't look any different is because this shape does not have a fill. So this is where we want to fill stuff in. Uh, and I need the S to be in the front. So I control shift bracket, bring that up, bring that up, send it back a level. All right, cool. Okay, more. All right, so there it is um, as a solid shape. Now, just to make sure it's always good to throw it underneath another color. So if I just made a rectangle here, doesn't matter how big for now, this will be temporary, and just give it a color and throw it to the bottom, okay? So now I can see what actually is not colored, okay? And this is important because you wanna make sure that your stuff is colored um, because otherwise, if you were to send this, let's say to uh, a printer and your stuff had some sort of transparency on it, um, then it would print with transparency. Otherwise, you would have the correct color on there. Okay. So I just filled them, made sure that they were stacked in the right order. Okay, so there's my black and white version. All right, so now, like I said, we're going to have uh, four more color ideas for this. So let's take this, put that there. Let's turn our layers on um, and bring this to its own layer. Okay, so we're going to make a new layer. Uh, 
BW original. And I'm just going to drag my uh, dots here to that. Okay. And it should keep all the layer organization the same, which it did. Um, and then this one is just plain. So just call this plain. All right. So we can turn off those. We need to turn them on. Um, so now we're going to take this and duplicate it. So I just grab everything. I'm going to um, hold down Alt, drag it over. Okay, now you're also, I don't know if I have to say this, you're not going to use Sarcona, you're going to use your name. So hopefully you did that. All right, let's get that over. So now we have three. Um, that. Cool. So here's our original. We're going to have four color copies. Uh, we can delete this one, or if you were going to do a going beyond, you could, you know, create another fifth one if you wanted. Okay. So now let's pick some colors. All right. So like in mine here, um, I kind of went with three different color schemes um, initially, and then I would have, you know, a fourth one on here. Um, and just like the pathing assignment, use colors that are related to each other. So don't just pick random colors um, to start. I mean, to finish off or to pair with each other, okay? This one actually has three colors mixed together. There's a lighter green, a purple, and a darker green, or brighter green. Uh, this one has more of this um, uh, muted orange, uh, brownish, tannish color with blue. This one has yellow and purple, okay? So feel free to experiment, but make sure they work together. So um, I like to do this big one here because I think it really kind of helps it punch. So the way I pick my colors is I'll go into this and I'll just pick, you know, like what I want my first color to be. So let's just say it's green. It's not going to be a crazy green like this. That's like way too crazy. Um, think about the kind of business it would be if this was a business. Something like that is like a pretty awesome green. So I'm going to use that. Uh, and I'm going to use this um, in several spots, right? Um, that green actually... I'm gonna keep that green right where it is, okay? Because uh, I really want that to maybe stand out some. All right, so now let's go to this one. I'm gonna hit I, and I'm gonna shift click on that green, okay? Just to give me the color of it. And that way I can use this as a rel relative uh, way to pick the color. So I'm at 100 now, okay? So uh, an even number between 100 and 360 would be just to um, go up 180. So if I went to 280, this is the complement of it, and it's this purple color. So that's how I end up with green and purple, is by doing that. Now, I didn't like how bright the purples were when they were coming out. Uh, so what I was doing is also cutting the saturation in half, so let's say 27. Um, and I could also make the brightness maybe a little bit bigger, so it'll be like 90. Okay, so that's how I'm ending up with those kinds of colors there. Um, now, I don't really like that combination. So I'm just going to eyedropper again, pick the green. Now I'm just going to pick something in more of a green scale. So let's say I took the saturation to 5% um, here, and then I took my brightness, and I lost all the green. So 25%. And I took my brightness to 75. There we go. So those colors are, blend nicely together, OK? And I could grab this outer circle, shift click that, grab this, hit the eyedropper, shift click, oops. Eyedropper, shift click that, there we go. All right, so those kind of work together. Uh, this one could use a little bit more punch. I don't think I want to go with this bright green because that's like too much green. Uh, so I may want to grab a different color for that one. So I'm going to add, let's say 90 to this, so 188. There we go, a little bit of blue in there. So there's one of my color combinations. So now let's go to the next one. We're gonna do the same thing. Pick the outer one, or, sorry, this one. Pick my base color and do something different. Don't do the same thing for all of them. You can round these off, so if that makes it easier, just like on the original. You can try kind of like a wilder color scheme, a more conservative color scheme. Um, I drop the blue. 
And remember, they're not exact, so I'm just round that back. Uh, so let's say I went to 360 here, and 80, and 40. Okay, and then obviously, you know, if you don't like the way it looks, then definitely don't have it be that way. Um, I'm going to take this one. Yeah. <laughs> let's see this. Right. See, in this case, you're really looking at the color saying, oh, I need to pick something different. I need to have another another color in here. So maybe another blue in here will maybe kind of sell it. Or maybe if I went back to the red, it's 360. Um, I might be able to pull something else off there. Let's try that again. Let's grab that blue again. Right, 360. Yeah, I'm not really like that pink. Um, maybe 270. 90. Yeah, that works. Well, I'll grab this too. Okay, and the idea here is that you're really playing with different color ideas, color themes. Um, you never know what the client is going to want, especially if some of them just can be uh, very obscure about their direction. Let's go with orange. That's a nice orange too. I drop orange in there and just as i mean just to even play with those to see right just i drop everything orange okay and then you can say okay well it's obviously too blendy together so this color here i want that to maybe stand out some more so i'm going to take the saturation down now that pops a bit more you know it's a little bit too desaturated because we kind of lost that um 40 there we go um Take this to 20 and the brightness to 50. Take the saturation to 60, 80. Yeah, I actually like that one. So let's go here. Yeah, I drop that color because I like that one. And then for the outer shell, I'm just going to darken that. Let's take the darkness or the brightness to. 50. That's cool. There we go. So now we have you know multiple colors here. Um, try to skin the two color theme. And just for fun, let's just see what you know something crazy pink would look like. Let's take this over to the blue, so we'll go 180. And we'll take this brightness down to 50. There we go. All right, so now we have four different color schemes uh, for this logo. Okay, and let's go and go layers. And all these are on black and white original, so all we have to do is just grab our stuff. Make a new layer, drag it to it. Green. New layer, drag it to it. Red. Orange. Uh, pink. Okay, so now we have our stuff, so it's cool. All right, now uh, some of the going beyond stuff that you could do, this is what you're going to be turning in is this stuff here. I haven't saved it all, which is wonderful. Save this as. Um, this will go into logo. There it is. Sarcona logo. Final. All right. 
So some of the going beyond stuff you could do is incorporating other things into your logo or making a completely different logo. Um, now, I don't want, because we've gone through all of these kinds of things, doesn't necessarily mean that you should use every single one of these. Um, but looking at this kind of setup here, uh, these will really give you a good idea of um, different things you can do with logos, except um, besides just like the boring Apple thing we talked about. Uh, so just look at different ideas and see if you want to play with something like that, uh, create different logo schemes, ways you can incorporate different colors. Something like this is nice, um, but there's really not a whole lot of color uh, possibilities on here because you really only have the swirls in the background and some other pieces. Uh, whereas something like this, you have different areas you can add color, different areas you can add color, okay? Um, so the minimum is that you created your logo to look like that. Um, going beyond, you would create different shapes of logos, maybe incorporating some of these, uh, maybe incorporating a different shape besides the circle. The circle is kind of simple. Um, you'll be graded on making sure you have all this stuff here. Um, you'll turn in your strokes, so make sure you... Well, save your brush library, and I'm going to drop this into my folder. Sarcona brushes. Okay. Uh, and then your patterns will actually come with you. Like when you open the new file, it'll come with you. Here's my old file, and you'll see that I have my old patterns that are inside here too. Okay. Uh, and here's my old strokes and things I was playing around with while I did this. All right, so to turn this in, uh, we have all these layers. I just want to make this a little bit more presentable. Okay, so let's go and grab um, all those already on layers. Leave that there. Uh, I'm going to grab each one of these and just control G to group them. Okay, to make it easier to select, move stuff around. There we go. All right, so this white one is going to be the centerpiece of it. So I'm just going to grab this and kind of scoot it in the center. And there's a little bit of something right there. Let's just delete that. Those paths that we uh, had issues with didn't want to go away. All right, cool. Uh, so that's going to be the centerpiece of this. And then these guys here, oops, if you ever do that just as the back arrows, uh, are going to be out on the edges. All right, and then just to kind of line this up better, uh, I'm going to throw in some guides. So three by three is the center. That's where this guy is going to be right there. You can probably be shrunk down just a bit more like that. That's good. Um, and then these guys here, I'm going to go to transform scale. And oops, it says uniform is zero. I don't want that. Um, one twenty-five. Okay, so make them just a little bit bigger. One twenty-five. Uh, yours are going to be obviously different because you're going to have different sizes that you drew these at. Okay. So I'm just going to give these a little bit of a buffer here. Um, let's see. So that's one inch right there, half inch. Yeah, 0.25 this way and 0.25 that way should be good. There we go. I'll pull this down to about 0.25 before the end of this. Same thing here. There you go. So it just looks a little bit fancier than just having you know them laid out like that. I'm just gonna delete the guides. Cool. So now when I get to your uh, assignment, I can look at all the colors here, or I can just look at you know, your work stuff. Okay. So let's save that, and then make sure you turn this in, and then make sure you turn the strokes up in.